The Oxford Dictionary defines war machine as the military resources of a country organized for waging war, an instrument or weapon of war. In the late hours of the night on August 8, 2014, a weapon of war was unleashed in Las Vegas, Nevada, leaving a blood-soaked trail that will never be forgotten. Welcome to Find Me in the Dark, a podcast covering all things true crime. This is episode 18, War Machine. Find me in the dark. Find Me in the Dark contains graphic content that may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Find Me in the Dark. I am your host, Eric Phillips, along with my co-host, Robert Prestige. What's going on, guys? And another co-host, Mason Bryan. Hey, what up, what up? All right, fellas. So we're all back together, uh, kind of, like virtually, right? I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, man, it feels, it feels good to be back, man. Yeah, I mean, me and Mason are uh, in a basement, and Rob's in a hotel room in California. So you yeah. tell me, Rob is not sitting here right next to me right now. He's not. No, he's. Uh, he, you're in what Yolo County? You said. Yeah, I'm, I swear <laughs> to God, I'm in Yolo County. That's insane. It's fucking terrible. I'm sorry for anybody that lives here, but Sick it dope. sucks. Yeah, dude, they're gonna find you. They're gonna be like, "Don't talk shit about Yolo." Like, that's, that's fine. Like, I'm at the Hilton. <laughs> There's like one hotel in the entire freaking the town. One, so. The one Hilton and YOLO. Yep. <laughs> All right. So today, uh, I'm just going to start it off right off the bat saying that uh, this episode has vivid descriptions of domestic violence. And if you are a survivor, um, if you want to skip this one, I completely understand because not only do we describe it, but we are going to play the 911 call, which is just really horrifying. It's a... Uh, uh, terrible to hear um, someone going through that. So yeah, just right off the bat, if you want to skip this one, I totally get it. Um, but I feel either way, this is something that we should that like needs to be covered. Just to also, a little bit of sexual assault is involved. Yeah, well, yeah, a little bit. Um, so our last release was my solo episode of Sid and Nancy, um, which I thought. I thought it was fun. I mean, it's, I mean, obviously not fun because she gets stabbed to death, but I was, I was, I don't think stabbing is that fun. Yeah, but it was a long time ago, Rob. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is, is there like a statute of limitations on it's punk rock? On, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it yes. Yeah. It's a, and it's funny because a lot of people like, you know, glorify Sid Vicious because they don't know that fucking story. And I'm like, bro, the guy is a junkie that fucking stabbed some chick in a hotel room. I don't really care what anybody says. He stabbed her. I mean, oh his, yeah he definitely did it right? i mean he, he straight up said it like <laughs> yeah i did it and then like two hours later like, the only reason wait a minute <laughs> people can say he didn't maybe didn't do it is because he legally never got convicted because he died but i don't care who you ask i know rockets red glare or whatever the hell his name yeah. is could have been a conspiracy theory that he did it nah sid vicious did it yep it's yep and then our last wide release was mason's baby fahim saleh which, by the way, guys, you guys, you guys killed that episode, man. I, you, I, I'm kind of jealous that I wasn't uh, a part of that one. Yeah, it was a fun episode, man. It was a crazy story I didn't know much about until Mason told me. I, I had like seen the, the like news articles pop up on my feed, but like I didn't read anything. 
but you can't you know what honestly most people didn't know most about that even uh even my sister who's one of those who reads like wall street journal every goddamn day didn't know anything about it it was a it was a case that happened recently with a high profile uh victim mm-hmm. so you're not the only one um i'm surprised we were able to turn that into kind of a full-sized episode that originally was supposed to be a micro episode for the patreon members yeah well i can i say one thing man the only the only thing that i really didn't like about that episode was um don't be making fun of my hats man hey <laughs> i didn't think you would listen to it. i know you said you're not he's not gonna listen i was like mother, i shut it off right after that i didn't even listen to the whole episode it's like fuck you guys i don't even remember what i said but i know i was kind of fucking jabbing off at the the beginning there it was good it was fun comedy um yeah so uh obviously all all the same stuff if you like the podcast go on uh wherever you listen to it and give us a five star rating and if you're feeling froggy um give us a nice review sign up for patreon patreon.com slash find me in the dark um not only do you get like our newest episode but you get the entire backlog of i I don't even know how many it is like 13 i think it's 13 micro 13 micro episodes so Mm -hmm. far yeah um, um speaking of that we do have a new patreon uh member by the way uh cameron strauss uh pledged oh, for 10 bucks so i appreciate that is you. an old oh. friend of mine i believe cameron strauss is from indiana i believe if this is the same cameron strauss i'm thinking of i think he's an, an old friend of mine from like way back in the day if this is the same cameron strauss i'm thinking of shout out to you buddy yeah what's up cameron welcome to the team yeah appreciate you yeah so with all that being said, uh, Mason, didn't you have something else you want to shout out? Oh, so uh, before we begin, I want to give a big shout out to Umbrella Inc. Studios out in uh, Valparaiso, Indiana. Um, I'll talk more about how this is correlated later on the episode. But uh, Kevin, Mary, I love you guys. I know I haven't been back in a while, but I said I'd give you guys a shout out. Um, if you happen to be passing through Indiana and you like to get ink done, you like good work, Go on down to Umbrella Studios and Valparaiso. Good people. I'll bring that up a little bit later, how it's related. But All right. So let's just get into this uh, War Machine and Christy Mack story. You guys ready? Yep. All right. Let's go. John Paul Copenhaver did not have the easiest upbringing. Born on November 30th, 1981 in Simi Valley, California, his German-American father was an officer with the LAPD while his Mexican-American mother was a nurse. John, like every other American boy, idolized his father. When his parents split apart, John stayed with his father, while his other siblings remained with their mother, who, according to John, suffered many years from a heavy drug addiction. For many years of his childhood, John felt like he was tasked with the responsibility of raising his siblings, especially his younger brother, who was four years his junior. At the young age of 13, John's world would be turned upside down right in front of his very eyes. At age 39, John's father suffered a fatal heart attack right in front of him and his nine-year-old brother. John tried to resuscitate his father with CPR, but was unsuccessful. His father was gone. Over the years, John would never fully recover from this loss. He blamed himself for his father's death. His mother had remarried, and John grew to hate the man he would call his stepfather. They would never get along. After high school, John attended the Citadel, a military college based in Charleston, South Carolina. He majored in biology on January 27, 2002. After only a short time at this college, he is kicked out for bad behavior. This wouldn't be the first time his behavior would become a problem. Copenhaver was arrested in 2001 for grand theft in California. He was arrested again for a traffic-related offense as well as battery of a public official and given a false name and identification to an officer in 2002. When asked why he had been kicked out of the Citadel, Copenhaver answered with, I beat the shit out of my stepdad when my tuition went unpaid. In 2004, John entered the world of mixed martial arts. Copenhaver would go on to win his first ever official MMA fight. He had found his calling. In 2007, John would join the world of reality television when he joined The Ultimate Fighter Season 6, Team Hughes versus Team Sarah as a replacement for another fighter who had broken his elbow during filming. In September of 2007, John would get into legal trouble again 
after assaulting a man in a parking lot in Las Vegas. In 2008, Copenhaver would become the center of much media controversy. After the discovery of the death of fellow fighter and former UFC champion Evan Tanner, John made statements to the press and social media claiming that he believed Tanner had killed himself because his career was over, despite the medical examiner on the case claiming otherwise. This was the last straw for the UFC, and they released Copenhaver from his contract. In this same year, John Paul Copenhaver would also legally have his name changed to his nickname he used when fighting in the octagon. His new name would be War Machine. In 2008, John, now legally known as War Machine, would end up in hot water with the law once again. Outside of a gym in Las Vegas, War Machine got into a fight after calling a couple of shirtless men tough guys in the parking lot. He would get away with only a misdemeanor and 30 days of community service, and War Machine would still continue his MMA career. After another year of fighting, War Machine would make an announcement on Halloween 2009 that he would also be entering into the adult film industry. In November 2009, at a birthday party in Van Nuys, California for adult film star Brookhaven, War Machine would again become involved in a scene of violence. After drinking heavily, it was reported that in a drunken, jealous rage, War Machine slapped his date, Alana Ray, in the face. After being confronted by other partygoers about the assault, War Machine began attacking every man that came near him. A year later, he was arrested for assaulting multiple people inside of a bar in Pacific Beach. He is charged and sentenced one year in prison for these acts. In 2012, while doing bottle service for a nightclub, War Machine gets into another fight and is charged with assault. He spends eight months in jail and is released in October of 2012. In early 2013, War Machine meets a young adult film star at a photo shoot for Hustler magazine and is instantly infatuated. Her name was Christy Mack. Christine Mackenday, a.k.a. Christy Mack, was born May 9, 1991 in South Chicago Heights, Illinois, but grew up most of her life in Edinburgh, Indiana. After graduating from Columbus North High School, she married her boyfriend at the age of 18, but after three years in the quiet Midwest, she left him and moved to Miami when she was offered a career as a tattoo model posing for magazines such as Rebel Inc. and Ink Girls. In 2012, Christy began her career in the adult film industry and quickly rose to fame as her unique appearance helped her stand out in the industry. After beginning her film career, she moved to Las Vegas with her mother in 2013. When on the set of a photo shoot for Hustler magazine in spring of 2013, she met a man she had never heard of before by the name of War Machine. Christy was not feeling well during the shoot, and War Machine offered to come up to her hotel room to take care of her while she was sick. Christy responded to War Machine's offer with, Fine, but we are not having sex. The two spent the night together, eating pizza and talking. It was an amazing connection. I fell in love really quick, Christy is reported saying. Though they lived far away from each other, they spent much time together, and War Machine would quickly move in with Mac in her Las Vegas home. Not long after moving in, to show their devotion to each other, they each got a tattoo of each other's names on them. War Machine would get Mac tattooed on his throat in big black letters. And on the back of her shoulder, Christy would get the words, Property of War Machine. All right, so now that we have learned a little bit, you guys know the drill. We've learned a little bit about War Machine, and we've learned a little bit about Christy Mack, so now I feel like it's just a good a good spot to take a little bit of a break and just talk a little bit about what we've gone over so far. So War Machine, which we've talked about, sick name. You know, it's unfortunate that he's such a prick. But every eight-year-old kid wants to be like, I'm going to grow up and change my fucking name to War Machine. Yeah, how did sure. this dude get the Absolutely. most badass name in yeah, the I'm world, man? Change, I wanted War Machine. Yeah, I'm going to change my name to Fire Bomb Tiger. You know what I mean? Night like, <laughs> But, like, you know, his starting off, not a good start. You know, like, he, uh, his parents splitting, you know, and uh, apparently his, according to him, I don't know the that this guy's a compulsive liar obviously which we'll get into later but you know he says that his mom is heavily addicted to drugs and then she 
remarries, which he just seems like the type of kid that would be a fucking prick to his stepdad. Like, oh, you course. know what I mean? He just mm-hmm. looks like it. I don't know if you guys seen his face. Look it up. He looks like a fucking asshole. He looks like a duck. I mean, That's he, he told like. Joe Rogan he bragged about beating the shit out of his stepdad over not paying his college bills. Right. Over, like, you should just be happy that he's willing to pay for you. He's not your real dad. You know, you, he's there. Right. You know? <laughs> um, And then, obviously, with his MMA career, you know, he got into, uh, basically, uh, as a backup on uh, season six of The Ultimate Fighter, which was, what, Sarah and Hughes? Yeah. 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 Um, and this, this, he, you know, um, at this point, like in MMA, uh, it was still like, you either were really good at grappling or you were really good at like boxing and kickboxing. But John, to be fair to the guy, he was, he was not great at one thing, but he was well-rounded. Like he could wrestle, he could grapple and he could box, you know? So it was kind of impressive at first, you know, but his, it didn't, it, it's just one of those things where you're showing on the show doesn't translate into the big show. Once you get under the lights, shit is different. And I think he only had one fight in the UFC after his stint with the ultimate fighter. Cause those fights on the ultimate fighter don't even fucking. Yeah. Count. They're exhibition. And they're he lost. Exhibition. The, he, it was an exhibition. He lost. He it lost. Anyway. Right. Yeah. So after that, then he goes to, I think he fights in like Bellator, Bama and a few other places. And it just doesn't go well. Uh, and that's when he decides, right. That he's going to get into porn. Yeah, he does like what twelve movies, I believe, is what they said. It's twelve adult films. Yeah, which career. dude, like you have to. I don't know, man. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah. Which off topic, one of the the only time I'm going to bring up any film adult film that he was in, one of them was a parody of The Office. Oh my God. <laughs> and I don't even think it was a movie. I think it was a TV series. Jesus. Well, was it called The Orifice? No. It was, <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh. So that that's the only one I'm going to bring up. I'm not going to bring up any adult films, but he did a parody of The Office. So I just just imagine that. Just trying to imagine trying to watch a porn that's based off of The Office. I right. Know. Right. And then you brought up before. Um, probably nobody knows who the hell he is, but you brought up his comments on Evan Tanner. Yeah. Who Evan Tanner early like we're talking early 2000s like he might have fought in like 1999 and shit too for the ufc but he was the uh i believe he was the middleweight champion um yeah he was the middleweight champion and uh basically what he did is he uh took his motorcycle out and then he went hiking in the desert and uh you know he basically got lost couldn't get back and um you know, they just found his body out there in the desert, said he had ran out of water and he had no cell service. Um, but for some reason, War Machine decided he was going to comment on it and said that he thought it was suicide, which at first was extremely controversial. But now is kind of like a generally accepted theory um, because Chael Sonnen and a few other fighters have come out, you know, because, you know, Evan Tanner was at the top of his game uh, and was fucking people up. But what people didn't know, because it wasn't public, was that he was an alcoholic. He was a manic depressive. He had just tons of mental disorders and stuff. So, yeah, at first, War Machine decided to interject himself into some bullshit and just try and be um, shocking. But it I, it is kind of accepted now. So, But even so, that is not something I, you know, especially right when it happens, I you wouldn't go out in front of a camera and just be like, yeah, my boy just uh just offed himself. You know, it's just something that it, I feel like it's a little disrespectful to to say in front yeah. of a camera. You know, it, yeah, that's just me though. Yep. Um, and then he, you know, meeting Christy Mack, uh, at the Hustler photo shoot after I think his last fight was in like 2013 or something right 2012 maybe i didn't know when exactly i know it was shortly before this but he just kept getting choked the fuck out so he was like i'll just start <laughs> slinging dead. i think he had four losses straight right before this i think Probably. four straight losses something like that but yeah he met her at that photo shoot and you hear this story all the time right i mean uh he meets this girl she says she's sick and he's like oh i'm gonna take care of you you know i'm and, you know he treats her all nice doesn't doesn't sleep with her on the first night, you know, takes care of her. And then like, you know, what's going to happen. You already know. Yeah. You know? Which is, which there is a quote where she said that, um, on that, you know, obviously we talked about how she said, uh, I'm not going to have sex with you, which I feel like that 
it's sad that most women have to say that even a even an adult film actress would have to say that to somebody but uh she was quoted as saying that when he did come over and spend that time with her she felt safe and comfortable around him yeah and, you know and, and which which is good it's good for a woman to feel safe and comfortable um but uh yeah yeah i mean does that cause i know he had a fucked up childhood um but i don't know i didn't see it when we were recording or anything did, did was he like diagnosed with anything well i know he was uh he was taking a uh, lexipro which is a, a an antidepressant uh right and then um basically i mean it, known to have be uh using steroids too i mean later on i mean obviously when he was a child but when he was when he grew up i do was... i do remember reading about that about him uh taking steroids i well I, to be uh, fair in the ufc at that point everybody was everybody was road. yeah yeah i mean he even says it in like one of his rants in a, uh his little video blog vlogs that he was doing driving his car and getting all crazy but talking about uh how everybody was taking steroids and everything else. <laughs> yeah, that's so. a famous quote from Nate Diaz. Everybody's down fucking steroids. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that can't be good, right? Because no, those two don't mix. You well, don't here's, mix the, well, here's what I've heard. Listen, I have friends that do steroids. I'm not going to drop any names, but I have friends that Rob. do steroids. They're and it's not me, guys. It's not Big Rob. It's not Big Rob. While Rob is beautifully sculpted, you would be, <laughs> you would be shocked to know that yeah. he is all natural. I know it is a surprise. You're right. Yeah, me too. You know, um, and uh, uh, I have friends that are on steroids and they say they've warned me like, because at one point I was like, fuck it, yo, I'm going to take some testosterone. They're so easy to get. Yeah. And I'm just going to shoot this shit into my fucking butt cheek and just get all bit. I don't feel like working that hard, you know? So, um, but they told me, they're like, yeah, just, you know, if just like think of how you are normally and it's going to be that tenfold mm -hmm. like it's just going to you know amplify whatever you are and if war machine is already an unstable person and he's you know injecting that stuff and then also on lexapro if he's on lexapro he was diagnosed with depression mm -hmm. yep you, you know what i mean so and you know in in, in you know we uh, we know that uh you know these Drugs that you use for depression, bipolar, things like that. I mean, they can have serious side effects, including more depression. And, you know, if, if, if it's not the right stuff, man, I mean, it really can throw you in the wrong direction. When yeah. it's supposed to be helping you, it actually harms you even more. It even says it in the fucking commercials. Yeah. Like at the end, right. it's, it shows like some, it shows some lady, right? And in the, in the beginning of the commercial, she's in like a dark room and it's gray. And then she takes a pill and the color changes and it becomes bright. And then she's running through a field of flowers and she's Candy dancing. And, shit. and it's like Lexapro may cause suicide, homicide, <laughs> right, and, right, right. butt warts, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like all kinds of <laughs> crazy shit. Yeah. And it, and, and it's the truth because, you know, with me some medications that I've tried before, uh, it definitely made it worse. Mm -hmm. Well, especially not only that, I mean, we don't know how long he was taking Lexapro for and anybody, no especially I know you two will attest and anybody out there is listening. Anytime you switch medication, especially antidepressants, those, those first two, two to four weeks are, I don't know, at least for me, they were always the craziest. It's always the worst time when you're trying to adjust. Everything's mm -hmm. always different. So, uh, lot, so if he was just taking them and, you know, it, it could bring about suicidal thoughts, pretty much every everything they list on the commercial yeah. usually is the hardest in the first 30 days, which is a medication. And we don't know how long he was taking it for, but it, it definitely mm -hmm. amplifies it when you're trying to adjust. Yeah. And it just sounds like, you know, Christy Mack was just like a nice person. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. everything really, I've heard about her, she was, she was great. Uh, she's she, a sweetheart. She seems really trusting, maybe a bit naive. Animal you know? lover. The woman had also one thing I didn't put in there. She loved animals, dog, uh, on pit bulls, snakes, ferrets, it was kind of funny uh, oh, that oh. she she said she had uh like six snakes and then like a couple rats. So she like, do you think she put those two like together, like just separated by a pane of glass? I don't know. Ooh, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be cruel, man. right? Yeah, she didn't say whether they were the same rats. She's just like replacing rats every time. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say this though. I, I I hope I pronounced the city right. So if anybody's from Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Edinburgh. Indiana. I want to apologize. I'm from Northwest Indiana. I've never heard of Edin Edinburgh, so I you apologize. don't have to apologize to yeah, Indiana, bro. 
I don't even know where it's, it's at. It's okay. I've, I'm from Indiana. I never, I never fucking heard of it, man. I, so I apologize, Christy. I highly doubt you'll ever listen to this, but I apologize for mispronouncing the town you're from. She doesn't. Okay, I'm telling you, there's no way. But, I highly doubt she'd ever listen. Yeah. To this. Um. So yeah, I mean, obviously, this is like that. Like I brought up the honeymoon phase, and everything's really going well, but it's about to take a turn for the worse. So why don't we just uh, get into that? You guys ready? Sure thing. All right. War Machine and Christy Mack's relationship would only last a few months before his violent rage would cause problems for the young lovers. In an interview with the MMA Hour, when asked what he would do about his tattoo if Christy and him ever broke up, War Machine responded with, Well, I would just have to kill her, and then get rest in peace tattooed over it. At first, whenever War Machine would get mad at Christy, he would just leave the room but his anger would come out more and more over time. However, War Machine's anger wasn't the only problem. Though they were both adult film stars, War Machine expressed his disgust for Christie's career and would force her to shower multiple times after shoots. He told Christie he wanted her to quit the adult film industry. At her lover's request, she eventually quit the industry after only a year and a half and decided to only do photo shoots and conventions. This is when things began to get physical. War Machine would begin to hit Christy with an open hand and would force her to keep up with his high sex drive. In one instance, Christy remembers an argument starting up between her and War Machine over a ferret cage she had given away to her mother. In the middle of cooking dinner, War Machine grabbed Christy by her throat, picked her up, choked her, and dragged her out of the kitchen. In another instance, violence would occur right in front of Christy's mother. When the cleanliness of the tank of one of her pet snakes came into question, Christy cleaned the tank and changed the water for her pet snake right away. A day later, after the cleanliness of the snake's water was brought back into question, War Machine accused Christy of not giving the snake clean water. In front of her mother, he demanded Christy take the water from the snake's tank and drink it herself. Christy refused. In a rage... War Machine grabbed Christy by the throat and began to drag her up the stairs into their bedroom. He shut the door behind him. He began yelling and choking Christy harder, but was forced to let her go when Christy's mother ran into the room, yelling at him to stop and threatening to call the police. War Machine grabbed a few of his things and left the house before any 911 calls could be made. In another instance... While in the car on the way back from a sushi dinner, War Machine would assault Christy Mack in a public setting. After yelling at Christy about a set of gold fangs she was wearing that she had bought from another man, War Machine snatched the wig she was wearing off her head. When Christy decided to try to get out of the car, War Machine grabbed her by the back of her head and smashed her face into the dashboard, causing her to chip a tooth. He then hit her multiple times. He told her, I've gone too far. I'm going to have to kill you. According to Christy, there were also multiple instances of rape that would occur in her house by her boyfriend, but out of respect for any victims of sexual assault who may be listening to this, we will not go into the details. After each of these violent incidents, Christy would make sure to take photos of her injuries and would save them to a private folder in her phone, one that War Machine could not find when he would go through her phone. After months of abuse and threats of death, War Machine and Christy Mack broke up in May of 2014. War Machine moved out of their Las Vegas home and moved to San Diego, but he never gave back his house key. Though she kept in constant contact with her ex-boyfriend, Christy began to go on dates with a man she met on Tinder, whose name was Corey Thomas. Once War Machine heard about the new man that Christy was seeing, he texted Christy and threatened to kill himself. All right. So now we're starting to see who the real War Machine is, right? Mm -hmm. Like the the uh, just the the nasty abuse because he's he's doing you know he's doing things at first kind of privately right Mm -hmm. like it's it's all this behind closed doors you know when we're out in public i'm nice to you blah 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 but then he starts doing that shit in front of people like at you know restaurants and that at uh um at his at in front of christy mack's mom in front of her mother yeah man i don't know i don't know how she uh she allowed that to happen man i mean i would have well what is she gonna do yeah. 
She, yeah. th- I mean, I mean she that's threatened a big to deal. call the cops. Like, she was just like, "Leave her. I'm going to call 911." Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, I guess that's a pretty intimidating looking dude, man. You know, it's not even that he's intimidating looking. It's that he's a fucking killer. Like, yeah, I get that sure. his records. I mean, a 14 and five record in professional MMA is not bad. <laughs> it's no, not, yeah, he wasn't doing terrible. And it's not like he was fighting people that were, you know, low ranked fighters. Any, if you fight the 50th ranked fighter in the UFC, you're fighting the 50th best person in the world. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm-hmm. not, it's not, yeah, rank 50. Oh, man. He's, no, dude, you're fighting a fucking killer out of 7 billion people. He's number 50, you know? Also, too, he, he held these threats above Christina Mother. Um, he always would uh, brag about the fact he had Navy SEAL and Hell's Angels buddies, and he would, he, uh, would threaten Christy and her mother saying, if I ever go to prison, I will have my Navy SEALs and Hell's Angels buddies come and find you guys and uh, and kill you or beat you. That was another thing. So I, I can understand them being a little scared. Oh, I can understand them being scared since he's, they've probably watched him on television beat the shit out of 170 pound men. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're talking about two feet and Christy Mack is small. Five mm-hmm. one, I believe. I've heard five feet. But really okay. she's that I, short yeah she is short, i had no tiny. freaking clue that's what i'm saying like this it, it, you know it's she's a very small woman very petite and i highly doubt she's trained in any in any and type it doesn't of matter if she form. has yeah it doesn't matter you know because he's a big powerful fucking dude that probably cut 30 40 pounds to get to 170 Mm-hmm. You know, he's a big dude and he's been training his whole life. One thing I, I thought was um uh, that we that we talked about in the last part, um, him wanting her to quit porn, the hypocrisy in this, especially he met her, he was a he was an adult film star himself. Mm-hmm. She was an adult film star when they met. Um, I feel like this is this was kind of a what it's kind of a sign of right there, a sign of abuse, you know, him kind of uh solely trying to mark his property, being controlling, telling her what to do by trying to get her out of the uh, adult film industry well uh it shows that he's he he was possessive when it started but he didn't want to show that part of himself Mm -hmm. and i also think that it shows um low self-esteem but i i think i think everything escalated pretty much like after she decided to quit right like it got a lot worse Mm -hmm. am i right yeah and i feel like psychologist but but i I just I, i I feel like since, you know, he uh, he he's seen that she would quit for him, right? And so now he's like, oh, I have control of her. Even more control. You know what I right. mean? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Like, he's, uh, it just seems so, cr- it's just one of those things where he knows who she is when he met her. He knows what she has done. Obviously, I'd say 90% of men on earth have seen Christy Mack. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Um, and, uh he just decided that he was probably going to test how much she was willing to do for him, you mm-hmm. know? And she did it. You know, she gave up probably a very lucrative career that mm-hmm. she, where she was making uh, tons of money in a business that doesn't hurt anybody. It's not a bad business to be in, you know, it's a way to make money and support yourself. And, you know, he kind of like, like uh, Mason had brought up earlier, he started treating her as if uh, she was just like, another just piece just something that he he owned you mm-hmm. know property of war machine property of, yeah what a fuck what a, not even to mention that fucking dude. worst hey how about that comment uh on the mma hour with ariel hawani where it's like what are you gonna do if uh you guys break up oh fucking killer and oh, get rest killer. in peace yeah. really yeah foreshadowing you know it, it that is I, I don't care if he was joking or and, not and let me tell you something man and this is something that I haven't discussed with you guys yet, but the UFC has a history of ignoring mental illness in fighters. Um, They have a current fighter right now, Tony Ferguson, who is a lightweight contender, one of the best in the world. He, he was on a streak where he hadn't lost in like fucking six years and he's fighting top flight guys, but he had to take a break because uh, one night his wife wakes up right in the middle of the night and he is, crouched over her because he believes that she is a witch and he has to kill her jesus and then later on i think that week like she was trying to take him 
you know what? I don't know the story completely, but here's what I do remember. I, don't, I think she was trying to take him to the doctor to get his medication and get him checked out. And uh, on the highway, he opened the door and just rolled the fuck out of the car. Jesus. Holy and just ran. Jump, he jumped like a six foot fucking wall and just ran. <laughs> All righty. But then the UFC continues to, well, it's not the UFC. It is the UFC's fault because they keep offering him fights. And then it's also the athletic commission for sanctioning these fights because this guy clearly has mental illness. And we already brought up Evan Tanner. Mm -hmm. Evan Tanner was well known for having mental illness in that circle. Obviously not in the public. They didn't want to bring that out. But everybody said it. Chael Son and Tito Ortiz, everybody after he died came out and said, yeah, he's mentally ill. Okay, well, then why, why is he still fighting? The last thing you need when you're mentally ill is getting punched in the fucking head all the time. That's the so, truth. yeah, the UFC has a, a history of that. Um, but this is, uh, it's, I don't know, man. Watching his interviews and watching this guy talk, it's pretty clear that he is mentally ill or just a massive piece of shit. Something, yeah, something's wrong with him. Or a combination but of both. He's making them money. He's getting into He wasn't that. making them shit. He's making somebody money. He's he's getting in the headlines. I mean, look, he's doing a, he was doing the Hustler magazine. He's doing adult films. Most of his uh, cover media coverage was because he was in the adult film industry. After and by that time, he was already in out of the UFC for a few years. Yeah, but he was still fighting uh, Bellator. Not, Bellator. That's so, not the UFC though. No, but I mean, it's still it's still a. I mean, Bellator is pretty big. You can't you can't say they're small. no. They're they're definitely like the minor leagues. You know. Yeah, I but, mean. They, but it's just uh, you just start to see this, this stuff, and it feels like it went from zero to one hundred. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, real quick. Yeah, it's uh, it's just an unfortunate. Well, what about also too um, when he threatened to kill himself? Um, oh yeah, God dude. is. It, it, I would say, obviously, like I said earlier, I'm not a psychologist, but that is definitely a common trait. I it, it seems with uh, with abusers, um. Whenever things kind of, when especially when your victim is kind of straying away, I feel like that is a common thing: is to threaten to to do self harm to yourself or threaten to kill yourself. Um, I, what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's a way to control somebody without physically controlling them. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, it's almost like blackmail. You know, yeah, like yeah, if, yeah. If uh, you know, if you don't if you don't change what you're doing, I'm going to do this and it's going to be your fault and you're going to have to live with it. It's like the holding them hostage. Like you, you either do this for me or I will. It's, and, it's and guess what, dude? Some I've, I know people that have done it. Like they've said, if you do this, I'm going to kill myself. And then they do it. And that's a way to fucking control somebody when you're not even here anymore. You don't mm -hmm. even exist. No. Yeah. For the rest of their lives. That's crazy. So if we, if you really look at it, we've in just this last part, these, you know, the last, uh, scripts, it's it's uh we've gone through almost every like if there was a list of things domestic uh abusers do we've gone through almost all of them yeah he's mm. he's the he's the poster boy for domestic abuse for abuse and domestic violence this man it, it should be on the poster for it um it's it, i actually we have some statistics up um that i pulled up earlier uh from the i believe it is the huffington post the uh, well, the ones I have are from the I think the just pretty much the national uh, what is it the Commission for Domestic Abuse. They have statistics showing um, on average nearly twenty people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States, and uh, during one year this like this equates to about ten million women and men. Um, that is a huge number, um, and on a typical day for the uh, domestic violence hotline says on a typical date more than twenty thousand phone calls are placed to the domestic violence uh hotlines nationwide which that is i don't care how many people in america that is a lot yeah that's a lot that's insane and you know in, in the huffington post posted this article and they were talking about uh this the average number of times an abuser hits their spouse before a police report is even filed is 35 times that's fucking 35 insane. fucking times man i mean man, that's, that's that's months and sometimes years of abuse before they finally say i need some kind of help that's right and insane it's, that you just you put up with it over and over and over again and then you know and you constantly hear these you know these victims and they're like oh you know the, 
they think it's their fault or they got to change right. something about themselves. You, and yeah. And do you know what I think that is, dude? I think it's Stockholm syndrome. Hey, bingo. I bingo. think it's just, you know, you're being held captive. And like we, t- we, we talked about how we probably, Christy Mack seems like a very good person and she probably did love uh, John War Machine and probably thought that, Dude, after a while, it has to just become the norm, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, maybe she thought she could change him, which is a lot of people have that problem. You know, I've been with with uh, women that were abusive, and I thought like, mm-hmm. oh, well, this, this, you know, maybe maybe I'm making her mad. I'm doing things that are making her mad, and it's like maybe I should change what I'm doing. To, you know what I mean? And it's just, I don't know. But, you know, and, and, and it's funny that you said that yourself, you know, because a lot of people – automatically think domestic violence is just men abusing women right. and it's not the case you know it says one in seven women and one in 25 men have been inj- uh, injured by their uh intimate partner yeah you know both- so i mean obviously it's you know it's a higher number in men uh or i mean in women but i mean men still get it you know oh for sure oh, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. And, it, it, and, and uh a lot of it doesn't get reported because um in today's climate uh, women get called liars mm-hmm. and men get laughed at yeah well, yeah, yeah. We, we, which what, what was the common thing remember when we talked about in the uh we're uh, doing the the miller brewery massacre remember we we're talking mm-hmm. about we talked about mental health it uh about it being embarrassing to admit when you have mental health problems same thing with this when you it being imagine being a man talking yeah uh, about being abused by a woman it, it, it can be embarrassing so a lot of you know men probably a lot of times won't even come out um i remember rob saying that uh i have a statistic here this is strictly about women though and i know we have a lot of women listen listeners out there but, uh statistic from the same hotline it says one in ten women um believe in the country have been raped by an intimate partner yeah that's 10 percent, and and i'm sure it could be even bigger than that because that's all that's been reported yeah uh, and now, obviously, rape has been a has been a factor in in the last part we talked about. In this, yeah, for sure. And that's a fucking shame, and it's disgusting because this is a controlling dominance type thing, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, and when when uh, one of my fucking pet peeves, dude, is when women come out and say, "Yeah, I've been abused," and then they're like, "I've been abused for four years." And then you see these fucking chads and brads on there like, well, why'd you wait so long? Well, guess what? It's none of your fucking business. Well, so just like we talked about the, uh, the how many times does it take before they report it? 35 times they've been hit. It, it's not something it's it, most of the time after one strike. Oh, it was an accident. Oh, I love you. You know, right. you're going to hear um, you're gonna hear a lot of these men or women like oh why don't you say something well i loved them i thought they would change mm-hmm. and that's a factor we'll see with christy mack and war machine she will say that i loved him and uh uh they um you know they they go through the honeymoon phase and there's even a honeymoon phase after an abuse uh i forgot what it's called but i was talking to you earlier about it um it's called like phase three or something like that yeah right? there's literally like a set set phases that yeah, that go on for crazy. domestic yeah. violence and it, and we're going through all of them, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which 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 um after usually from what it from what it seems like after abuse after especially physical violence, the abuser will go right into what women or most not just women but uh, what most victims will describe as the best part of a relationship is kind of the the nurturing the mm-hmm. uh, the making you feel yeah. better after you've been abused the, oh i love you i'll take care of you and kind of redoing that honeymoon phase um, you know I, I didn't mean to cut you off but no, in ahead, in her ahead. in her interview or in uh the court proceedings she talks about that and how it was like the uh um the best part of their relationship was after he beat her those those days following yeah. her yep and that's the which is crazy part because he did anything and everything, you know, she was like, you know, he would watch all the movies that I like to watch. He would he would go get the snacks that I like, you know, he would run my bath and blah, 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 rub my feet, you know, things like that. And it's just like, wow, that was the best part of your relationship after getting beat. Like, that's it's just it's nuts to me. Right. It's like him making up for what he did. And and there's probably like what a couple of weeks until it just starts the cycle back over again. Mm-hmm. 
and you know i brought it up before that you know women come out years later and say that this happened and men i'm not going to generalize all men but a lot of men come out and say well why didn't you report it well okay when they do report it's hard to prove that this is happening you know um and honestly the 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 punishment for domestic violence is not enough majority of the time. And we're talking about a young man that could possibly get out in three years. And then where do you think the first fucking place he's going is? Yep. Yep. And it happens all the time. Plus, you know, plus you think he, he's, he's talking about all his Navy SEAL friends and right. everybody else, you know? And, and so, yeah, of course, I mean, he's putting this, the fear into these, you know, into her and her, or her mother, which and, I think, yeah, go ahead, man. No, and, and that was really it. I mean, it's just, I don't know. You know? No, I think, and I think that's also a tactic too. I, I think he's full of shit. I don't think he has any fucking Navy SEAL friends or any Hell's Angels friends. I think it's just another way to manipulate Christy. Yeah, it's a, it's a, sca- it's a scare tactic, fear. Yeah, it's he's just scared. like, hey, keep your fucking mouth shut, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it, the, the guy is just a manipulative piece of shit. Yeah, we're gonna find out even more. Of your shit, On that right? note, um, actually, Rob, I think you told me there was one last statistic you were telling me about earlier, uh, about how many it was from the Huffington Post, um, about I think it said uh, three or more women are killed every day by their spouse in the U.S. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and, that... which add that up. That's it. Doesn't sound like a lot, but I know it's every. That is a three, three, three every day. That's three or more, just in the United States. Yeah, I mean, just think about what is it like? Fucking twenty people per year get killed by sharks. (laughs) It's like people are horrified of sharks. You know, it's 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 a it's a massive number. It's a massive number. Um, but you know, yeah. Yeah. Before we go on, uh, I, I did get, I gave a shout out to, uh, my buddies in umbrella Inc earlier. I wanted to say, now I wanted to drop in why I was giving them a shout out. Um, there's a, my, uh, back in 2013, um, Christy Mack actually came to umbrella studio. She's old friends with Mary, my buddy, Kevin, Kevin's wife and was hanging out with her and got the three X's. If you look in any photos, oh, yeah. the three X's tattooed on her. I think it's her left hand got that tattooed by my buddy, Kevin Cole, who tattoos on me all the time. And his wife, Mary is also tattooed on me. Um, but so kind of a six degrees of separation here. I don't know Christy Mack personally, but me and her have been tattooed by the same guy out of. A so you guys are like Indiana. basically best friends. We're bestly, basically best friends. Right. But, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to, I just had to give that little shout out. So again, umbrella ink. All right. Well, let's just get back into this story. What do you say, guys? Yes, sir. It is August 8th, 2014, and it's late in the evening. Corey Thomas is laying in bed next to Christy Mack. A light turns on, and the door to the bedroom flies open. Within a split second, a man is on top of Corey, pounding his fist furiously into his face. In the middle of this assault, the man begins to put Corey into a chokehold and drags him into the bathroom. Who are you? Who the fuck are you? The man asks. No, John. No. Don't you kill him, Christy yells at the attacker. This violent intruder was none other than Christy Mack's ex-lover, War Machine. In the middle of this ferocious beating, Christy grabs her cell phone and dials 911, but she sets the phone down before she could speak to a 911 dispatcher. The only audio that can be heard on the phone is Christie's pleas for her ex-boyfriend to stop his attack before he kills Corey Thomas. War Machine stops his attack, lets Corey Thomas get up, and tells him he can go. He tells him that he better not call the police or we will have his Navy SEAL and Hell's Angels friends come and find him. Once Corey leaves, he turns his attention to Christy. It was her turn. War Machine grabs Christy and forces her to disrobe and get in the shower. While Christy is in the shower, he grabs her cell phone. As he goes through her phone, he strikes Christy in the face every time he sees something he doesn't like. He hits her so hard that she ends up on the bathroom floor. Sitting down next to a beaten Christy, War Machine began texting and emailing to cancel any plans Christy had for the rest of the week so that no one would get suspicious right away if she disappeared. He then begins kicking her in the ribs. After beating Christy, War Machine leaves and grabs a knife from the kitchen. He comes back and begins sawing off her hair from her scalp. 
as well as cutting her in various places. He takes the knife and begins to push it into her ear and pushes it so hard that the knife breaks off at its handle. War Machine then rubs his hand between Christie's thighs and says, This is my pussy. I'm going to take it back. War Machine was going to rape her. But this would end up being a difficult task for War Machine, as he was unable to get an erection during this event. In frustration, he grabs one of the dog's blankets, throws it on top of Christy, and leaves the bathroom to go back to the kitchen to find a brand new knife. This was it. He was about to murder his former lover. Christy saw this as her only chance as she ran out of the back door. After escaping her house, Christy ran to many of her neighbors' houses banging on every door, resulting in multiple 911 calls to the LVPD. War Machine fleed the scene upon realization that his victim had escaped and went on the run. At the end of this assault, Christy Mack had suffered 18 broken bones, a broken nose, multiple missing and broken teeth, and a fractured rib as well as internal damage to her liver. Days later, after being on the run, and after a lengthy social media post and messages to Christy and to his fans, cops are called to a hotel in Simi Valley where it was reported that a man that resembled War Machine had assaulted a female in the lobby. Cops show up to War Machine's room, where he is waiting for them in a fighting stance. They tase him and take him without further incident. After his arrest, but before his trial, War Machine attempts suicide in his holding cell, but is unsuccessful. At his trial, War Machine didn't testify. The trial went on for eight days. On the last day, the jury found War Machine guilty of 29 of the 34 possible charges, which included kidnapping, battery, and sexual assault. He is sentenced to 36 years to life in prison with the possibility of parole after he turns 71 years old. So, yeah, there we have it. There's the, uh, just, I mean, just the details. I mean, because I remember when it first happened, right? Like, I remember, one, I remember when they were dating, mm-hmm. and everybody's like, oh, yeah, oh, cool. They're like, you know, oh, shit, Christy Max beating a guy that can fuck me up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> De- you know, she's she's with this dude. and um, But I remember when it happened, and then... Christy Mack posted that picture of her in the 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 bed. That, it is that's the, the first thing I remember. Yeah, is that like her her face is just completely swollen and I mean this guy he tried to kill her. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. Who what? puts a who puts a knife to somebody's ear and is not planning to kill her? Exactly. Oh yeah, no he was he he was she was going to die. She was good to get out of there. One thing I want to bring up right away. First off was War Machine's fans. I don't know if any of you remember when this all happened, but do you remember the hashtag Free War Machine and everyone that backed them up when this happened? Do you guys remember that? I do not. Was that like on Twitter or something? Yeah, Twitter, I've never had Instagram. Twitter it's <laughs> and some of the shit is still going on. So after this happened, I don't care what you believe happened. Christy Mack was beat the fuck up, and motherfuckers were on every one of her social media accounts telling her such things as you deserved it you like it rough calling her a whore telling they told her he should have finished the job you should be dead these were some of the these were not just told once these were multiple people for a long time telling her this shit along with the hashtag free war machine right after this case had right when this shit happened and it is fucking disgusting i remember when that shit happened because i've still it's it's just the, 
it's something that hasn't changed with uh, social media is it, it's internet bullying, but it's also, it, it's just disgusting. The things people will say, especially to a woman, just because she was an adult film star, they said, you like it rough. Uh, you know, I, you got to remember they're stuff. hidden. They're hidden behind the fucking keyboard, man. Fucking they would keyboard. never well, say that shit to somebody's face. No, but it's a bunch of people. It's a bunch of men that are, that have fragile masculinity that are fucking mm-hmm. pussies. That have this uh, different view on women. You mean Proud Boys? Yeah, fuck the Proud Boys. <laughs> but let's not talk about that. Oh, but yeah. um, like, uh, y- you never see these types of comments when it's about a male porn star, do you? Oh no, you just don't. But but when it's there's something about a, a woman being comfortable with her sexuality that that intimidates these fucking basement dwelling cock shiners, like. That was well said, Eric. Thank you. That was perfect. Well said. Thank you. Like I'm, I'm glad you said that too. Because I don't know if either of you. I, I chose when I, when we wrote this. I chose to skip over a lot of the trial because the whole trial itself could take an hour and a half of a podcast. But the defense team, what they said, and normally I would understand. Okay, criminal defense lawyers, you're going to do whatever you can to get your client off <clears throat> or less charges. But did you do you guys know what the defense team said on trial against Christy Mack to defend their to defend War Machine against the accounts of abuse and rape, uh, kidnapping, battery? Do you know what they said? We do, but the thousands of people that are listening don't. <laughs> well, to the thousands of people don't know what they said. The criminal defense team, and I'm sorry if I'm getting a little excited right now. This is something that pisses me off. The criminal defense team described the fact that Christy Mack was an adult film star that liked supposedly liked rough sex in her films they said that she cannot accuse war machine of rape in any case because in her movies she liked rough sex okay they were literally saying that she was consenting to being raped being raped because of the movies she made okay um Sorry. I'll just I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to clear this up for for everybody that thinks that way. The difference between her films and what happened with War Machine is consent. It's Fuck consent. It. <laughs> you know what she <laughs> said? She asked she was fine with it. They probably went over it when it when 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 they were filming, you know, she knew what she was getting into. She knew she probably, you know, was with the the other actors in the film and stuff and was totally fine with it. This dude broke into her fucking house, beat the shit out of some guy she met on Tinder. Like, could you imagine your your you fucking see Christy Mac on Tinder and you go to her house yeah, and you're you pull, in yeah, her yeah. fucking bed and then you get the shit kicked out of you? Yeah, <laughs> you finally what? made it there. <laughs> Wait, and then he booked, which that's another thing. A lot of people gave uh, they were giving Corey Thomas shit for leaving. But um, what the his, fuck is he gonna do? Well, this, you know he can't do nothing. They they and they tried as as part of the defense in there. They tried saying, "Well, Corey Thomas uh, learned a little bit of Brazilian jiu jitsu when he was younger." No, you know what? This motherfucker took like one class one time, and he wrestled in high school. You're not gonna take on a fucking champ, a, a fucking MMA champion. I don't. Okay, not champion. You're not gonna take on no, a world won, class MMA. He won fighter. titles in the regional. Okay, good. So sure. but, but but here's the thing: I took karate. If uh, Khabib breaks into my fucking yeah. house, I'm not going to fight him. You know what <laughs> I mean? You're get your I still ass have my gi. You know <laughs> what? But yeah, but with this, but they kept, they, they, they used every excuse in the book at his trial. Um, another thing too, when Christy Mack testified, when she was on the stand, two big things happened. One, War Machine, and it's on record. And if you listen, laughed at her? he fucking yep. laughed at mm-hmm. her statement of her being raped by him and not not talking about the night even that he broke in talking about previous times when he raped her he fucking laughed mm-hmm. disgusting a second time I, I don't know if it was christy mack on the stand or if it was uh one, somebody else they called up the motherfucker blew a kiss to yeah. the da which is a female blew a kiss to the da in the middle of his trial for rape um assault everything he got charged for in the middle of this case he blew a fucking kiss in front of the judge <coughs> this man was not sorry for any of this no disgusting yeah he's a piece of shit what? i mean is there anything i mean no. but that's... for sorry to interrupt you eric but as you said earlier 
the clothes you wear, the pictures you put out, your job title does not equal consent. What equals consent is, as Eric said earlier, consent. That is my little rant for the day. I am so sorry for yelling, but this is upsetting to me. I am a, I'm an adult man. I have sisters. I have a mother. You know, it, it, anyone, this should not be okay to anybody. But for some reason, this is something that seems okay to a lot more to a lot of people out in public. And you still see it though, like, uh, you know, you you see this like this type of behavior that that if if a, a a woman is involved in some sort of sex work or some sort of you know just uh anything like with on, what is it on, only fans oh yeah especially during covid only fans uh, yeah on but you rise. see yeah but you see these dudes that are like oh this fucking whore blah 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 and i was like yo but yet they're sitting at oh. but it's a consenting thing she's yeah. consenting to show her body to people that are going to pay but she's not letting you come over and f- she's not telling you hey if you want to come over, she's no, not I get letting it. them, you know, she, oh, I, this is a, another rant. We're going for another podcast, but listen, if there's any men or, you know, and even women too, consent is consent. Anything else is not consent. Unless somebody gives you exact consent to do these types of acts to you, it is not consent. All right. We're Let making me- that clear. Okay, so let's clear this up. Consent is consent. Is consent. Unless it isn't consent. God. I was thinking the we same can't thing. make that any more clear. <laughs> if you're not consenting to consent, it's not consent, goddamn it. But yeah, dude, I mean this this guy was so we brought it up earlier in the in another script break. I don't fucking know when. But we talked about how um he was starting to show that he was possessive. Yeah. And this is the ultimate showing. This is the boiling down to what the real bullshit is. And it's that, um, you know, dude, like every guy goes through this, right? It's happened to everybody where you're in love with somebody and they break up with you. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And then what do you think about for the next th- three, four five months? Is that them being intimate with another person? Mm-hmm. Every guy thinks about that. We went through this recently. Remember, remember, I was over here a, a few weeks back. I had I had a similar situation with an ex girlfriend. You were here for me. Yeah, yeah. It, it it was. I, I went through the same similar thing. I, I was I was actually uh, honestly a domestic violence situation almost came up. Yeah, you know, I've been in a situation. But you know, what my first thought wasn't it wasn't I'm gonna go. I ain't, I'm not gonna go over to her house. I'm not gonna beat the shit out of a woman. I'm not gonna force sex upon her. It, Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting a little too angry. This is a very emotional. Yeah, everyone gets it. Okay, everyone God. understands. Thank God. Um, this is something you're allowed to be upset about. Um, but how? Thank God, though, that this they they didn't slap him on the wrist. No. And you know what I think? Years old. And I think uh, the big thing that did it, obviously, besides Christy Mack's testimony which brave woman i mean oh that poor holy shit is she brave but we all heard the 911 call all of you guys have heard the 911 call now and Mm -hmm. the pain and horror in her voice i mean you can't fake that you know what i mean that's some sort of primal fear good on her to do that too like i'm I'm, it's really good that she because you know she might not have much evidence except for well no i think she knows the alternative is not doing it and her her test and then him getting six years yeah if you know that, if that yeah i mean yeah because look at brock turner he fucking raped a girl and got out in Holy six shit, months because the judge didn't want to fuck up his swimming career and this <laughs> is still <laughs> happening man you know what i mean yeah. do you, it <laughs> one thing <laughs> Do you know War Machine got married in prison, right? He got married recently. Was his so, name Doug? No. <laughs> no, so there is a there is a woman that reached out to War Machine. It happens all the time. It's yeah, and I'm not you know what? I'm not hating on this woman. You know, you find you should love be. Where you can. Fuck you whoever you are. Okay. But um, but she knows of all of his crimes because in the state where he, I forgot what state he's locked up in, but it is they the warden and I forgot who else. One of the person have to legally, before they can get sure. married to a felon, have to sit down and explain and show the full-on crimes that uh, this felon has committed before they're allowed to marry them. 
And after sitting down and seeing all these crimes in the pictures, she got married to him. So he's okay, married. Okay, okay. But listen to me. Okay, this is not the first time this has happened. I know. Okay, Ted Bundy got married in prison and had a child. Richard Ramirez had fans show yeah. up. Yeah. That like wanted to, like there, dude. There's everybody go on fucking YouTube and just look up Richard Ramirez fans or the Night Stalker fans outside of court. They're talking about how sexy he is. This is a rapist. This is a murderer. I believe this that. shit happens. Oh, Charles Manson got married in prison, and she was like 24. This brings some shit on. like that. This this is a whole new topic for a whole no 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 no. There's literally a diagnosis. There's an actual name for the disease. It is. I was can't it remember what it's called. It's called it's called like dumb fuckitis. I don't know. It's it's uh it's weird. But what's it? Chris Watts. Everybody oh, I knows. I really that. I really Chris, hope nobody. Chris is. Watts gets hundreds of uh nudes and shit in the mail a week. That is fucking disgusting. Yeah. Rob, do you I'm sure you will agree. Eric, I already know you agree. You just told me. That's fucking disgusting. Well, Rob also gets hundreds of nudes a week, but it's from me. Yes. <laughs> and it's consent. <laughs> consent. I've been meaning to talk to you about that, Eric. Hey. Uh, yeah, you need to shave. Boy, I need to change I need to change the lighting. <laughs> yeah. You just but, need to but, change your draws, man. It's like the same ones over and over again. <laughs> hey, man, does it count if I just wear them inside out <laughs> not to divert too far from, <laughs> from the point though uh ladies gentlemen this is serious shit here just <laughs> i'm done with my rant you all heard my viewpoints today i am disgusted this case was so hard to cover for me and and i'm a i'm a white male and this was hard for me to cover are you I don't know. We'll find out on the next episode. <laughs> we'll find out on the next episode. I am, I am, a, I am a, I am a white male in his twenties. In this case, fully disgusted me when I when I was. It was so hard to write the script. I was calling Eric every two seconds. It, it as a man, this disgusts me. I can't imagine. I, I feel sorry if if you're a female. How, how about as episode. as a human being, it should disgust. Human you. being, this was disgusting. As a good human being. As I a, hope you rot the rest of your life in prison. I hope you die in prison, War Machine. I, I hope he just kills himself, to be honest with you. you know, speaking of... Yeah, but his, somebody let him. Epstein, that motherfucker. Turn the cameras off. Whoever right, was the yeah. prison guard for Epstein, get that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know? But this type of shit is happening right now. When he killed himself, you know who he blamed in the suicide note? I'll give you two guesses in the first one. Who, Epstein or... No, no, when when uh, when War Machine. You know what the first person he blamed is when he tried to kill himself in oh, prison? Oh, I thought you said he killed himself. I was like, we missed no, a no, whole no, fucking no, no. part? <laughs> when he tried to attempt suicide in his suicide note, he still victim blamed Christy Mack. Of course he does. He's going to continue, continue to do it because he's, he's a narcissist and he's not going to accept yeah, responsibility. Uh, yeah. Fuck him. Well, but that's... Anyways, guys, that is... The horrifying story of War Machine's fucking attempted murder on Christy Mack, which, you know, hey, hey, how about, why is attempted murder a thing? You know, just because you suck at murdering people, you don't get murder charges? Like, if if somebody catches me, like, trying to break into a car, I don't get attempted car theft. Yeah. I get theft. You know what I mean? I don't like, know, man. It was- you just, know, I, I will. T- but he, hey, but he. Dude, got I attempt to. I attempt to lose weight all the time. It just doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I will give him. I will tell you this. The only thing I empathize him with, empathize with him with, is beating up Corey. Okay, man to man. Nope. No, still you don't no. At all. No. To me, I'd be like, okay, you're I broken can up with a little bit. Yeah. Still no. You're broken up with the girl. No, dude. That's you know, all right. You got a point. Be a man. You, you just swayed. You just swayed Call me right to the other side. I was going to empathize a little bit with this piece of shit. You just swayed me back to the that's other side. That's a problem, though, because a lot of men do empathize with that position, and it's something that you've probably had ingrained. Your whole life has been driven into your head, like, "Oh, I'm going to fuck that dude up for fucking my girl." She's not your girl anymore, bro. Yeah, you got a point. And 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 she has the right to be with whoever she wants. Amen. So, and you know, if if a girl wants to fuck a guy every single day multiple men as long as there's consent two consenting adults it doesn't fucking matter do whatever it you doesn't want doesn't matter that's, your that's right. right live your life do whatever you want you only got one as far as i know amen and on that note ladies god damn it be careful um reach out to us i know a statistic uh is that uh two years after a breakup are the most dangerous uh years of a woman's life 
and it's a horrifying thought and it's something that me mason and rob will never be able to understand but i just god damn it be careful um anything that happens to you report it Ar- arm yourself get a gun get a knife i don't give a shit if anybody tries to touch you like that or hurt you just fucking kill him you have my permission <laughs> <laughs> mine too and like i said with that being said um rob good job today hey thank you sir you guys mason also? mason good job buddy thank you so much and everybody else we love you find me in the dark out peace to all of the victims of domestic violence abuse and sexual assault who may be listening we want you to know that you are not alone and that there is hope if you would like to reach the national domestic violence hotline dial 1-800-799-SAFE or 7233 again 1-800-799-7233 or visit thehotline.org